So I'm going to calculate a vector projection here. Now, uh, this is a bit of an arbitrary question, but we've got some stuff. We've got a vector A, a vector B, and an angle between them. So we know that vector A has a magnitude of 4. So we know the length of that is 4. We know that vector B can be written in component form, 7i, 3j. And we know that the angle between these two vectors is 30 degrees. Uh, now, this seems like some, an odd mismatch of uh, information, but it's the easiest, uh, the easiest assemblage of information to calculate a vector projection. All right, so let's do our vector projection. We're going to do A onto B. So if I'm going to do A onto B, I've got my torch here. You don't have to draw a torch every time. Um, I'm drawing a parallel, a perpendicular line to B, and I'm projecting A onto B, and that's going to create this new vector, which we'll call U. That's completely arbitrary, but I'm saying A onto B is going to be my vector U. Now, how are we going to find vector U? Well, it'd be nice if we knew the length of vector u. Now, the length of vector u is going to be really, really straightforward because it's just basic trigonometry. So, uh, the length of vector u, in this case, now, cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and we can rearrange that to say that hypotenuse times cos theta equals adjacent. Now, in this particular question, the adjacent is this length here, which is the magnitude of u. Uh, the hypotenuse is the magnitude of a. And cos theta is obviously cos theta, the angle here. All right, that piece of information is really important. So that says that the length of the vector projection of a onto b will be equal to the magnitude of A times the angle between A and B. All right, so now that tells me the length of vector U. All right, I'm just going to hold that there for a second because I don't want to know the length of vector U. I want to know vector U. I want to know what it is. So it's this length in vector B's direction. So if I find the unit vector of B, that'll give me a tiny, tiny little vector here called uh, the unit vector of B. So I scale that down. And then if I've got the unit vector of B, I can then multiply whatever, the, uh, whatever that is by that length, and then I'll scale it back up, and I'll have an answer. All right, it seems a bit, a bit wacky, but let's do it. So the unit vector um, of 7i plus 3j is 7i plus 3j over the magnitude of 7i plus 3j, which is 7 over root 58i plus 3 over root 58j. That's this little pink thing here, which is the uh, unit vector. Now, I need to take that length, I need to multiply it by that, and I'm going to have my vector projection. Here is our vector, or one vector projection formula. Vector projection formula, important information. If we're projecting A onto B, we'll get a vector called U, which is arbitrary. It's going to be equal to the magnitude of A cos theta, because that'll give us the length of it. And then if we multiply it by the unit vector, we'll get uh, the components I and, and J. All right, so we can finish off our example here by taking whatever that value is, multiplying it by that value, and getting an answer. So here I've put it into my formula. Uh, 4, which is the magnitude of A, times cos theta, which is the angle between them, times the unit vector of B. Uh, and then uh, 4 cos 30 is 2 root 3. 2 root 3 times the unit vector of B. And we get our answer in terms of I and J. Now, again, what is that? That's the vector, that is the shadow when a torch is put perpendicularly to vector B and creates this. That is that vector there. Now, that is a good formula for the vector projection, but there is another neat little one that I want to show you that we can sort of prove from that. Now, you might have noticed when you were doing this that A cos theta is part of the dot product formula. Um, a, B, cos theta, magnitude of A, magnitude of B, cos theta. So I'm going to just uh, 
figure out how to make that something else. Uh, now, if I divide by the magnitude of B, I get A dot B divided by the magnitude of uh, B equals A cos theta. That seems useful to me. I can now say that A dot B over the magnitude of B equals um, equals the magnitude of A cos theta. So I could, if I wanted to, take that thing there and shove it into my vector projection formula. And now I've got a new vector projection formula that is kind of useful because it doesn't use an angle. Uh, but I can simplify that just a little bit further. If I take a vector, b, and divide it by the magnitude of itself, I get a unit vector. So I can rewrite this little formula in, in a little bit of less work. Vector a dot vector uh, dot unit vector b. Uh, now that's going to be super useful. So I've got a new vector projection formula that I can use. So here's another vector projection formula. All I've done is replace the magnitude of a cos theta with a dot unit vector b times unit vector b. So to be able to do this, you really need to know how to create a unit vector, um, but you also really need to know how to do a dot product. Now, if I, what's the what's the benefit of this? As I said before, the question I gave you had some really useful bits of information. It had a magnitude of a already given to you. It had the angle between the vectors already given to you. Um, this is useful because if you have vector A and vector B in component form, just in component form, you can find the projector, the vector projection of A onto B quite easily. Now, if you want to find the vector projection of B onto A, obviously you're going to have to swap your letters A and B, whether you're using this formula or whether you're using this formula. I'm not going to run through an example of this. It's pretty straightforward. I might put some work in uh, under the video there, but that is how you calculate vector projections to formulas and why they work.